House of Bob is made possible in part by Calgary, Alberta's own Legend 7 Brewing and by support from listeners like you. To pledge your support, visit patreon.com slash houseofbobcast. Last time on House of Annihilation, our heroes have sprung trap after trap in the dark catacombs of the Tomb of the Nine Gods, pitting them against the vengeful dead and also each other. Now, separated, the party must contend with both loneliness and a life-changing amount of alcohol. Hello, I'm Jake, and I'm playing as Crate, a doomsaying disciple of Dendar the Night Servant. I'm Dan, I'll be playing Liani, Liana Servana, the Elf Beastmaster, with my little buddy Hamlet. My name's Alex, and I'll be playing the burly yet sensitive pirate, Hork Jones. I'm Christina, and I play Douglas, the now harrowed Ganassi wizard who is looking to save his family's legacy. And I'm Sean, your dungeon master. Thanks for joining us, and roll on! The stone slams down into place, and then from the mouths of the four gargoyle heads, wine starts to pour out. Oh, hell yeah! (laughs) In a gushing, river the room begins to fill is this fresh wine or is it like <laughs> rancid rancid wine it smells delicious dougie you fool <laughs> <laughs> you missed, you missed the greatest treasure in this town. <laughs> nah i'm good Porik saddles up to one of these gargoyle heads and has a drink of wine like out of a water fountain or whatever i want you to reevaluate your image of what you're picturing this is a torrent of wine that's <laughs> literally filling the room. Oh, okay. Well, well Pork just like <laughs> he leans down yeah. and like cups up some wine in his hands okay. and then and drinks it. Just sure. lie on the ground and open your and mouth. Then, <laughs> and then jogs over to where this stone door has come down and rolls up his how sleeves about, and gets ready wanna, to lift. How about we back up and you guys give me initiative? Oh. A cool four. Nine for Horik. 20 for Lee. 13 for Douglas. Douglas is just looking at his watch outside. (laughs) Tapping his foot. Should be full by now. Yeah. Okay. They fell for my trap. (laughs) (laughs) Lee, you are there standing over the sarcophagus and you'll be the first to act as the door is now shut and wine is filling up quickly, approaching the height of your ankles. You see on the inside plaque on this coffin, it reads, drown your sorrows. You can tell that in a matter of maybe a minute, maybe a little bit more, the wine will fill this tomb up to the ceiling. I'm going to make a perception check. What do I see around this room? Go ahead and make a perception. Yep. Oh, that's a crit. 26. You look around the room. You see these four large gargoyle heads. Their mouths are about five feet by five feet. You've got this illusory sunlight coming down from the ceiling. The sarcophagus, the feet of it is now covered in wine. You've got your two friends, animal companion, and a zombie. Just one friend, really. <laughs> one friend, a guy that, you know, trying to make sure that the world ends. And <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> so the saying, drown your sorrows. Drink up. What are you going to do? I don't know. You have six seconds. One. I two. get beside the tomb and I get ready to lift it when Three. someone else comes up. Okay. Douglas, you're outside the tomb. Uh-huh. The, this giant stone block is just in front of you. And I turn around and I'm like, I thought we were running, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Does anything leak from the bottom so I know what's kind of going on? No. Okay. I'm going to do a perception check, see if there's like any buttons or anything on the wall. Sure, make a perception check. I think you have the fine secrets wand as well. Do I? Feels like something we would have given you. Eston isn't carrying it anymore, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Okay, then I'm going to use that. It points at the nearest trap or secret door. Mm Mm-hmm. Doing this giant cube in front of you. The door that we came through? (laughs) Oh, what a waste of thing. You know know that the range is about 30 feet, but it's not pointing at anything else. Mm -hmm. Horik. Horik runs for the door. Yep. And on his way there, he leans over and scoops up a little bit of wine in his hands. (laughs) Just like making the best of the situation, right? Yeah. It's It's a little bit less that has to fill the room. (laughs) That's right. It's it's um, a nice Cabernet. Yeah. And and he uh, pounds on the door and yells for Douglas. Okay. Can I hear that? No. Okay. (laughs) Then he leans down and he tries to start lifting this door. Okay. Make a strength check with Lee with advantage because Lee is aiding you. 20. It absolutely refuses to budge. It almost feels like it's welded to the floor. (sighs) Crate. The only thing I'm thinking is this says 
into darkness descend. So like, what's happening with this, where the sunlight's coming from? It's now giving you a nice golden sunlight reflecting on the wine. It's uh, quite a nice scene if it wasn't so uh, yeah. horrifyingly. <laughs> yeah. like yeah. We need to trick it into thinking it's full. It's like sarcophagus in the middle of a room. Yeah. How, yeah. how big is it? Uh, it's like, <laughs> we all get in I would it. say, That's what I was kind of thinking, I would say it's but... like knee height. Probably one person would fit inside mm. it. All right. I think it should be me. <laughs> and Hamlet. And sorry, I just uh, the the sunlight it's coming from like an actual opening, or you no, said it was it's, illusory. It's, it's just kind think, of appears. Think like the Hogwarts illusory ceiling. There's a ceiling there, but it, there's sunlight streaming down from it. Gotcha. So it's not just a single beam or anything. No, I can, I can cast blindness on myself. <laughs> <laughs> Blind yourself is not what it said. <laughs> no, but I'm descending into darkness. Oh, I see. I mean, just close your eyes then. <laughs> and nothing else on the sarcophagus. Nothing else. No inscriptions, no images, no animals, no body inside it. Just this wooden plaque that says drown your sorrows. I mean, I think I want to try getting in the sarcophagus and closing it. Then I'm in darkness. Just okay. to see. Do it. I can always come back yeah. out after. It's not locked, right? <laughs> you, don't, you don't know. <laughs> All right, I rush over. And it's I not close. your turn. It's crazy. Oh, turn. Yeah, I was gonna close the door for you. <clears throat> no, I can do that with magic. <laughs> Slam or I mean, drown your sword. It's just that seems like the one you have to go. Yeah, or you have to go underneath. And sorry, final question. I saw Horik try to open the door. I feel like it you, not not possible. You feel like it's yeah. not possible. Okay, fine. I'll. Gosh, gee whiz. <laughs> Just do it. Get in yeah, there. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try it. I'll pop in the sarcophagus. Be like, see you guys in six seconds if this doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and close the sarcophagus lid behind me. Okay. You close it on top of yourself. I'm comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> the wine gets a little bit higher. It's getting close to the level of your knees now. Lee, it's your turn. What do you do? Did I notice anything happened after you closed the coffin? No. Still no. pouring out of the gargoyle's mouths. I don't even know what to do. Drown. Okay. It's like a sewage outflow. There's just wine yeah. pouring so out of these mouths. So there's six gargoyle. Four. Four. Okay. I was thinking about covering the eyes of all the gargoyles. Mm -hmm. That sounds Maybe as good as anything. Darkness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. I run over to one and I wrap a piece of cloth around its eyes. Okay. You drape some cloth over top of the carving's eyes and nothing happens. Cool. Doug, what are you doing outside? <laughs> You've heard nothing. Yeah, sounds like everything's fine, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I've been looking to see what I could do. I, there's not much. Just again, because I didn't actually get a chance to do that to see if there was like any sort of well, like le lever or button or anything like that on yeah. any of this hole. 19. You are running your hands along the walls. You're up and down this hallway. You're going back and forth over top of the body. You see nothing in this hallway that looks like you could activate anything. Mm. Horik, what are you doing? Lifting this block is not possible. That's not happening. Is zombie Kozef in here with us? Yeah, he's just standing there. He's just standing oh, there. He's not going to last through this. <laughs> he doesn't have to breathe. How sturdy is he? Uh, uh, <laughs> like in terms of floating? Like how well is he holding together? He's less than a day dead. He's less than a day dead. So like, okay, so Super pretty strong. well. <laughs> okay, not okay. Um, <laughs> where is this going? <laughs> yeah, where is this going? Are you going to uh, drown him? Horik starts kind of jogging towards one of these gargoyles and grabs this Kozef zombie on his way there and tries to jam the zombie's arms <laughs> in the mouth of the gargoyle to stop the wine from flowing. Okay, which one are you doing? Are you doing one of the ones closer to the door or one of the ones further from the door? Closer to the door. Okay. You are trying to jam his body in there and you can tell that the pipe or whatever it is that's depositing the wine into your place is too wide. It looks like you could probably crawl into wow. it if you really pulled yourself in there. Damn. Yeah, it's pretty wide. You definitely would be able to shimmy your way in there. You would just have to fight back against the torrent of the wine. Well, I, I try to shimmy my way up and fight back against the wine. Make an athletics check. Okay. 24. Okay. You begin to hold your breath and struggle against the torrent of wine forcing your way back through the chamber it is crate's turn he has to hold his breath while he's doing this i assume yeah unless you went in backwards or when he gets thirsty i'm pretty sure you can hold your breath for your constitution times two number of rounds what is that 32 32 so making the move into there 
counts yeah. as one. Right. Plus one for the round that you spent. So you're at 30. Okay. So Kate goes four, five, six. And it obviously didn't work. So you, so still, he pops hear, the, you still hear the wine <laughs> yeah. rushing in. Yeah. So he pops the lid back open. Anybody else got any brain ideas? And he sees Horik climb <laughs> up the... Uh, hey. I only had like, one idea. I don't it's know. Not it's not the a bad, worst idea. I actually don't think it's the worst idea because yeah. it is drowning his sorrows. Yeah. And wherever the wine is coming from is emptying out. Yeah. I don't mind that idea. So I think I'm going to try it too. On a different one. <laughs> you should go behind him. On a different one? <laughs> or, motherfucker. This is silly. Take advantage of my right. slipstream. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I guess I'll do the same one. Sure. Make a athletic checks with advantage. With it, oh yeah, my boozy slipstream. Yeah, I got twenty-one. Okay, I would say that you are pulling yourself in there behind him. Great idea, Horik. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, two of your friends have just crawled into this pipe that's flowing wine. Yeah, my only thought was maybe there's something on the ground that we can like. There's got to be a way for this wine to be like cleared out after, like a drain. Yeah. Yeah. That's maybe like hidden or something like that. Well, now it's under about three feet of water. Wine. 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 Yep. Now it's and under about three feet. Is it feet a red wine? Turned to the water. It's a red wine. wine. It's a Cabernet. It's, so it's, I can't. <laughs> it'd be like impossible to see underneath it if I went under it. Totally okay. impossible. All right. I can only put all of our eggs in one basket. So. <laughs> okay. Put all of our eggs in one gargoyle mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Make an athletic check with advantage. 18. You are having trouble pulling yourself up. You're maybe only making a quarter of your speed as opposed to the other guys who are going kind of half speed. But you are pulling your way in there. Keep track of your air rounds. Douglas, still nothing. You've searched up and down this hallway. You yeah. have no sign that any button is out here or anything like that. I really, I have no idea. We haven't gone this way. Have you have we? not gone down that other hallway. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go back towards the stairway and turn right. Okay. But so I'm going to always have my candle up ahead of me there. Sure. So sending the candle up ahead of you, yeah. you go and turn around the right-hand corner. I'd say that you're at the green staircase, so you're able to go uh, all the way down there. Mm -hmm. You come to the end of this hallway. It's a 15 by 15 foot chamber. And in the center of it is this giant gaping green devil head, like a, another one of these giant carvings. The walls and floor here are cracked and carved with images of terrified humanoids falling. That's fair. The middle of the floor has that bearded devil face painted green with the gaping mouth that it looks like you could just crawl in there. <laughs> I send the candle in first. You send the candle in and as soon as it passes the threshold of the mouth, completely disappears into like a darkness. Oh, good. I'm going to spend around thinking about it. <laughs> okay. Horik, you're pulling yourself forward. You <clears throat> through this like wine that's gushing back at you. And you get to this point where you can feel that wine is rushing at you from the left and ahead of you. There is this like stillness of you push past this torrent that's coming to the left of you you go a further up this little slope and you burst free of the line <gasps> inside this pitch black tunnel. You did it, Horik. <laughs> Crate, you're right behind him. You pull yourself forward and Horik makes room for you and you're now inside this pitch black tunnel. Horik can't see anything, but you can see that he is, you know, dripping and sticky with wine. This tunnel continues on a little bit ahead of you to what looks to be some sort of hatch ahead of you. Cool. Lee, you come right up behind them, slower, but you eventually get there, and you two see Horik gasping for air, Crate just like breathing through his like snaky face. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so where else would I breathe from? <laughs> <laughs> that old snaky face. Snaky face. Yeah, I, I reel back in disgust. <laughs> you forgot. For what, well, you never seen a snake breathe before? <laughs> Lee. Yeah. Where's your Velociraptor? Yeah. Oh my. God. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to think he's behind me, but you didn't tell him to question. do it. No. Roll an athletic checks for Velociraptor. All right. You're out. nice. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> I could have forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You could have also just said it drowned in there. So. <laughs> it's with advantage because it's with advantage because you guys had the slipstream. Seventeen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> As you get up there, you wait for these tense seconds. Uh, just, oh 
no, please, 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 please. And, and then I reach and down. Then, and you reach down and you grab this like reptilian body and you pull forward this screaming demon. No. You- <laughs> <laughs> Hamlet comes out, pulled up, and nestles into your neck, choking in, in a, a panic. And wasted. <laughs> you, guys so are, drunk. you guys are now hammered. <laughs> you don't see anything when your dinosaur breathes. <laughs> no, this is normal in your face. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I imagine Hamlet would like he'd use his claws to claw his way up mm-hmm. on the wall, so he's mm-hmm. probably better at it than any of us. You guys pull yourself forward through this trap door end of the tunnel ahead of you, pouring out into this large room. It was rectangular with one wall is like a rounded side. The air here reeks of sulfur and brimstone. On the floor of the chamber, there's a pentagram traced in salt surrounding an ornate sarcophagus. Its lid is covered with the figurines of prancing frog-like humanoids. Uh-oh. Oh, we don't have the jewel! <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> God damn it. As soon as Horik tumbles out of the trap door and takes in the scene of the room, you feel Obalaka speaking in the back of your head. I, th- I, th- I think that pentagram could use a little bit more salt. Maybe you better bolster it. Horik feels this drive in him like he's never felt before, and he moves over to this pentagram and pats around in his pockets looking mm-hmm. for salt. He feels like he should have some. He's never had any, but he feels like he should. Roll a d100. <laughs> For salt. I mean, in your like ration pack, you might have one. I like how I've never had salt. Whoa. Did you just roll a hundred? You sure did. Yeah. You have salt in your bowl. <laughs> 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 I lo- I'm looking over and I see zero. Zero. Not just yeah. salt. You have Himalayan salt. Yes. <laughs> wow. Himalayan <laughs> rock stuff, salt. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really good. Mark didn't remember packing it, but <laughs> it's there. There it is. You pull this little packet out and you add it to the pentagram. Can you communicate with the demon in you? It's not a demon. Or whatever it is. It's a literal god. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Demons Can you are talk gods. to this god in you? That's a good question. Can Horik talk? Have you tried? Like, just be careful. 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 Watch out. Just be I'm being careful. <laughs> Whoa, Horik. Whoa. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Um, nobody. Okay. <clears throat> also, why are you putting salt on that? <laughs> Uh, it just seemed like a good idea. So there's this pentagram, right? And on the right wall away from you, you see the outline of a door inset into the wall in addition to the sarcophagus. Okay, let's go. We need Douglas in here. Yeah, I think check out the door first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you go through the door. Don't step on the salt. You make sure not to step on the salt, which is good for you. (laughs) You come into this small five foot wide, 20 foot long hallway with a little alcove on the side. There are ancient cobwebs filling this corridor. The alcove houses a dusty bottle sitting on top of a table. On the other side of the corridor is another door, very similar to the one you saw before with the, just like the out barest outline of a door. Do we have any inkling of where we would be in accordance to where um, Douglas would be? You're not sure with that tunnel that you had to crawl through? You could. We don't know how high we went up or whatever. Not sure. So we might be on the next floor even because we had to go up, I think. Yeah, probably. There was a slight grade up for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. You said there was a dusty table? Did yeah. I get that right? Okay. Yeah. With a dusty bottle. I want to look at that table. I want to look at the bottle. There's this stoppered bottle. It is made out of greenish glass. There's a cork in the top of it. Inside, there's this swirling sort of light that starts to coalesce. And then you see inside it this little person. They have reddish skin, thick black hair, and red robes, and they're waving out at you. Huh. (laughs) Does it look like they're drowning? Excuse me? Oh, yeah. He's casting. What languages do you guys speak? What uh, what about, what's his name? Our translator. (laughs) Orvex went with Douglas. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Horik speaks common and dwarvish. Okay. Crate speaks abyssal, common, draconic, omuin, and undercommon. Whoa. I got dwarvish, elvish, and primordial. 
No common though. So Lee. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, we're even no. talking. I'm so <laughs> I'm kidding. Lee, you recognize the language that this creature is speaking as Terran, which is one mm. of the four primordial languages. I'm useful. <laughs> What's he saying? Let me out of here. Let me out of here right now. Who are you? My name is Keshma. Why are you here? I've been trapped. You like uh, obviously just you know. How about you let me out, and then mm, and then I can help you. There's lots of traps I in here. You. I don't know if you're a trap Do or not. not. Like that no, attitude. Come, just just <laughs> I've been here for years. Please just let me out. Open the stopper. Give it a little pour. Come on, man. Let me out of here. Can I just take you with me? Can I just pick inside you up? the bottle? Yeah, that's fine. Are like, you you're okay in the bottle? No, right? I, uh, it's. It's small. It's cramped. It's terrifying in here. I've been here for so long. Please just let yeah, me out. Yeah, but you're not. Me, yeah, you know, you, you can let me out. You, come on. I can. I, we can do each other solid here. I can help you out. I can help you out. So you can help you? us out by just telling us stuff. Yeah, you can help around. us in the bottle and then we can free you after. Yeah. Sure, sure. What, what, what can I do for you? Anything to let me out of this thing. Where's the exit to this room? Is it just that door? Uh, yeah, you go through that door. You came in that door. You go out that door. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> he's he's <Ooh>. right. <laughs> <laughs> he's not trying to trick you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he could have told us the other door. <laughs> does he look like just a tiny human or does he look like a he's different red. species? Or? Make a knowledge arcana. Sure thing. Three. 17. It's not a human. In many ways, it looks human, but there's something more elemental, more earth like about it could be an earth version of douglas <laughs> an earth ganassi or whatever oh sure oh like, <laughs> an earth version like a human <laughs> no. like a dirt but, but a we dirt we ganassi. don't know one of those dirt ganassi i mean so far he's been a real dick what do you mean well, I, you, you can't understand i him. haven't been anything you <laughs> i can, guess so <laughs> that's I kind can, of our point i can understand him though why is he calling me a dick just let me speak out common of i can't i only speak terran <laughs> <laughs> so I was gonna do a. Ask okay. him. We're ask in Schultz. Speak common. You know? <laughs> <laughs> ask him why he's entrapped here. Yeah, why? Why are you trapped, buddy? Seriously, Asarak trapped me. He came to the plane of Earth and just like put me in a bottle. Do we gotta rub you the right way? <laughs> <laughs> There's literally one way to do that: <laughs> is to let me out of this bottle. If you just just knock it off the table, all you gotta do. Let's do a trial run, and I pick you up, and I put you in my oh pocket. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I, I, like, tucked in the top part so you can oh. still see out. <laughs> let me out. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to scream the whole time. If you, you feel, the, if you feel you the reverberations be, yeah. from the inside of the bottle, let me, please let me out. <laughs> if you please don't be let quiet, I'm going to put you in the wine pit. <sighs> he just, like, sits cross-legged at the bottom of the bottle and puts his hands on his knees and just like rocking back and You've forth. You've been in there for years. Another week isn't going to kill you. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <A week. laughs> I don't know how long it's going to take us. <laughs> Another two to four weeks. <laughs> okay, we're putting you on the three-month probation. After three months, we'll let you out. Well, assuming that his review goes well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we get final say, obviously. So I just want to make sure the door behind us is still there, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> just because no, you said it looked a little secret or whatever. Yeah. And then you like oh. looked up all dramatically. <laughs> Sorry, I was I was reading something. Um, <laughs> I didn't expect you to notice that. <laughs> no. Yeah, you and you guys head towards that door, and you can hear Keshma inside the bottle being like, "I can give you gold. I can give you sapphires. I can give you all sorts of treasure. Just please let me out." Of the and I just want my friend back. Probably you're oh. ignoring him. Which friend? Hmm. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All of them. Do I have to pick? No, you just only specified a friend. You guys, well, I only you, consider one a true friend, but I won't tell you who it is. You oh, guys shit. go through this door and find yourselves <laughs> in another large chamber. There's a chariot in the middle. Hey. And six glass cauldrons on the oh, side. That sounds familiar. Hey. We didn't see this door before. Now, this looks like just like the room you were in a little while ago. Oh, can right. I lift the thing again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it the same room or does it yeah, just have the, the same, same layout? Oh, same. shoot. Same we have room. one person down. <laughs> I didn't really help. All right. This, <laughs> this time Hamlet will help. You head over and you lift the door open and you head out to the hallway just as you see Douglas come out of a hallway on the opposite side. Hey, Dougie. Hey. Douglas. Douglas. Why do you guys look so gross? You look gross. Hey. We're slimy like you are all the time. <laughs> we learned it from you. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> that was a great burn, Lee. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> you got crate on your side, Lee. Good job. <laughs> All right. What happened? Well, 
It's what? a long story. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. And then, then we tell you. Yeah. <laughs> it filled up with wine. We should probably go check out this tomb with the pentagram because that seems like something. Yeah, I don't know if we are going to be able to get back there, but we should go check oh, it yeah. out anyway. Is the door well, open yet? We didn't close the door behind us, did we? You now know where the doors are, so you can oh, come and go as you right. want. We don't have to go through the wine room oh, anymore. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay cool. through the secret room. Yeah. Come on, Orvex. So you go through that secret room <laughs> back to the room with the pentagram? Yep. Yep. Okay. This is our new little Terran friend. Oh yeah, see, I got a dude in a bottle. And you, oh. and as soon as uh, Lee holds him <laughs> up, he's like, "You, you, you also speak primordial. Uh, please, you, you gotta let me out of here. I can give you whatever you want." Oh, oh. whoop! And back in the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like this Who's is that? A, this. Does anyone get like that uh, trickster god or whatever feeling? Oh, vibe? totally. No, 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 no! Please, please, <laughs> anything. <laughs> anything uh, it's like he doesn't even tell you anything he just says he'll give you stuff yeah. which is very trickster god could we actually do an insight on his whole conversation sure. see if he feels trustworthy or not oh shite 26 shite, shite. You're so, so, and you're just reading like body language <laughs> oh i guess uh, so, crate, that's right but, yeah. but what you see of the facial expressions and the body language of this creature is that it seems genuine it's like honestly distraught trying to get its way out of here trying to beg and plead with you I've I'm, seen many slaves beg for their life before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're looking for sympathy, don't go to Craig. <laughs> no, it, it seems his plight genuine. is genuine. Yeah. Why are you here? I was captured by Asarak. He came to the elemental plane of Earth. He shoved me in a bottle and trapped me here. And now I've been sitting on this table in the side room for better part of a century. Is he a Ganassi? No, I'm a Dao. Don't be racist. That's not racist. Go ahead and make a knowledge. Stop racist check. Knowledge Stop, arcana. Yeah. Stop trying to play the race card. <laughs> Do a which now? Make an arcana check. Okay. Fifteen. You know enough to know that Dao are like a genie from the elemental plane of Earth. Mm. Oh, you cannot trust genies. Yeah, you can't let them out of the bottle, literally. <laughs> oh my god. So my rubby the right way was pretty spot on. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should let him go. He can probably help us out. I don't think we're in any rush to. Yeah, you can just chill with us for a bit. I mean, he seems pretty desperate. What can he do outside of the bottle that he can't do inside <laughs> for us? He'll just oh, be more cooperative. Sounds, basically. Yeah. I just want information he'll, right now. He'll shut up, I think, is part of it. Yeah, and he'll be on our, <laughs> he'll be friendly towards us instead of yeah, cursing crying. us. Or just try to murder us the instant he gets out. But everybody thinks trying to murder us in here, so that's not like a new yeah, feeling. Yeah, this one we can choose if it's going to try to murder us or not. Let's put it to a vote, all of us voting for letting him out. I raise my hand. I elbow Orvex <laughs> to also raise Orvex his Orvex is like, uh... You abstain, oh, Orvex. I abstain. I am, <laughs> I, am, I am here as a translator. Right. Do you speak primordial? Uh, no, I speak Omuin. Yeah, that translation. And common. Nice. And a little bit of halfling. <laughs> I look at the rest of you guys. Mm-mm. Hork just kind of like, clears his throat and looks the other way. That's rude. <clears throat> Was that an abstaining then, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not abstaining, but saying voting no. No. That's, the, that's, oh, a, that's a polite a no. no. No, Douglas. No. <laughs> that's a rude no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he betrays us, we will simply cut him down where he stands. Exactly. He's a genie. Oh, that's right. <laughs> They're harder to cut down. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think Obviously, he's not so powerful that he's not trappable, so he could. I mean, I feel like it just seems like a setup, like he's the only thing in a room or on a table or it's like and some, he's trying to entice us with it's like right. some greater force trying to actually give us a fucking break for once <laughs> I doubt and that we're being very overly much. cautious about it. Um, <laughs> and I'm just under the mind that we shouldn't set off every trap we see. You think it's a trap? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to use a secret wand. To secret that. I don't think that's how that works. I don't yeah. think it works on people. No. If he betrays us, that's not a trap. <laughs> but if this whole thing is a trap. You guys are just standing in that main yeah. grand staircase area. Mm -hmm. It wibbles and wobbles all over the place and it doesn't point at anything. Yeah. Everything is a trap here, you guys. What was the genie's name again? Keshma. Keshma. I have one question for Keshma. Do you know the location of the Black Opal Crown? I translate that. No, but I could absolutely help you find it. I have that magic. Desc describe this magic. <laughs> I'm a genie. I could, uh, if I look at my spell list <laughs> here. <laughs> oh, sure. I can pass through the earth. I can scout out for you. I can, if it's made out of stone, I could find it. I can teleport. I can get us out of here. I can move us to another plane. I can 
surely anywhere is better than this place. <laughs> Horik wants to use know your enemy and yes. learn a couple things about this Ginny. What do you want to know? Horik would like to know how the Ginny's current HP and total <laughs> class levels, if any, compares to Horik's. Higher. For both. Yes. Okay. <laughs> He's a genie. Well, you know, maybe he's a shit genie. He could be. He's in a bottle. <laughs> Lots of genies are in bottles. Although, yes. Trap, though. There are crate votes, yes. Okay, well, now you can abstain. Or, Max, you have to pick a side. <laughs> this is two on two? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he more scared of? <laughs> if I roll an even number, Orvex will vote to let Keshma out. Hmm. If I roll odd, Keshma stays in. Fair. It's even. Everybody readies their actions to <laughs> yeah. punch him in the face. <laughs> Fine. I give the bottle to Douglas. I'm okay. like, all right, you go right ahead. All right, genie. I know you're kind. Let's not do some tricks, all right? And I pop open the bottle. You pull the bottle open and this torrent of sand pours out in this swirling whirlwind and Dow. It hasn't free. happened yet. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 but there is this like, <sighs> As the Tao forms its humanoid shape, sand and rock filtering out of its body and onto the ground, and he forms up, towering about 10 feet tall, stretches, does a couple neck cracks, and is like, oh, thank Mother Earth. And Douglas. (laughs) Douglas, I appreciate you letting me out. And then he passes his hands back and forth a couple times with some verbal and somatic components and then begins to speak common as he casts the spell Uh, tongues i appreciate the assistance of another elementally descended being man i get it yeah (laughs) looks at the rest of you looks looks, looks, looks at looks at the rest of you and is kind of like it is what it is (laughs) hey two of them did vote so i think you said something about a crown yes the black opal crown he puts two fingers to his temple and you see these like like these waves of sand like flow away from his fingers across the body as he ripples in front of you and points it out on like a fucking (laughs) like mall map you are here here. (laughs) sends me a google pin (laughs) says to you the crown rests in a maze a maze (laughs) Beneath us, there is... It's almost directly beneath us. Where you found me? Straight down from there. I think that that is where you will find it. I'm pleased to be of service. Farewell. And hey! then, And then a torrent of we sand... We got one wish. Torrent of sand... <laughs> fucking wasted it. ...whips around, swirling around his body and... I'm like, wait, I should get the wish. <laughs> just dissolves out of existence in front of you. I mean, that wasn't a bad wish, I don't think. It was a bad wish for the rest of us. <laughs> to know where the black opal crown is? Yeah, yeah. he's... The- oh, yeah, yeah, we don't give a shit about that. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> he asked me. <laughs> you're, no, the, you're the only one who, like, asked for anything in return. I was so. gonna ask once he was out. Like, <laughs> no chance. <laughs> That's not how you deal with a genie. Yeah. You got a bargain from a position of power. Yeah. I wanted to be like, give us a long rest without having to rest. But then he's gone. <laughs> Great's feeling good about today. (laughs) (laughs) See, I told you guys, we could have had a cool thing happen and you had to let this fucking guy talk instead. Well, you know what you have to do. I think we'll go on our own way now. (laughs) Or it feels ripped off and soggy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you could have wished for not to be sticky and soggy right now. (laughs) Well, we could have wished for a lot of things we didn't let the genie out. No, you really couldn't have because you had to let him out eventually to get those things. Yeah, neither of you guys can complain. You said no, not to let him out anyway. Yeah. You weren't going to get yeah, jack shit from him. <laughs> We'd still have him if we didn't let him out. You guys wouldn't have gotten any wishes, though, if you didn't let him Did out. Did I leave the bottle behind? Bottle is, yeah, sitting on the ground. I, I saw my main bottle? Or? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did you say you smashed it? Because yeah. I said that to you. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, oh, your hands awkwardly touched. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck no. you, Jeannie. I think we both kick it like at the yeah, same time. Yeah, we like, curb stomp it together. <laughs> okay. And Lee storms off back into that room where he originally was. Okay. 
Okay, so you guys are heading back into the... I'm just going into the room at the table. Yeah. I'm sure. going to clean up in there. <laughs> Do you like sweep up the cobwebs and stuff like that? And... No, clean myself up. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, yeah, never mind. <laughs> you, you clean off the wine. I pull out my duster and, and I get cracking. <laughs> Douglas, Douglas could technically press to digitate you all, but... Yeah. yeah, you didn't ask though. <laughs> yeah. I'm down a fair amount of hit points. Me too. That's why I was hoping to get a long rest out of this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so maybe let's rest up here and then... Uh, Damn it. Okay. You, and then we'll uh, check out that, that coffin. Are you guys going to be inside the, the room with the chariot or the room with the table or where, where do you want to rest? I like the table, table room because it has like a hidden door on it. Sure. Yeah, on both sides. Good, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You guys tuck in and begin to take your rest. Uh, at this point, you can attune to any new magical items that you have. Obalaka's ring is a ring of protection plus one. Nice. The, Who has that? That is Horik. I'm going to attune to the necklace, I guess. The amulet of health mm-hmm. from Papazotl's tomb. That sounds good. That is pretty good. What about the staff? Did you want to attune to the staff? I can do both, yeah. Well, if you have enough slots. I don't. You pick the three items that you're attuned to. Yeah, I'm going to look well, if I'm going to get take anything off. I need to keep the headband. I don't need that ring. Wand of the War Mage, I think you should definitely be attuned to because it's increasing all your spell attacks. Yeah. Yep. So I'm just going to only one thing. So just the amulet? Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else want the staff? No, thanks. To see if I can actually use staffs. It's it's like a staff, like a quarter staff. Yes. Yeah, so that's a very common weapon, is it not? Yeah. Sure. I don't really have any magical weapons that I'm a, although I have that sweet <laughs> <That's>, sword. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Doesn't hurt though. Realistically, I don't feel like zombie. Kosef made it out of that oh, no. uh, he's, place. So. He's not with you anymore. Is there any bodies around me? <laughs> nope. Nope. There was I that, mean, there's that, that bone that, that room. There's all the bone room. Oh, yeah. I can make a skeleton. Or in you there. could do the goat humanoid guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd need about 10 minutes, but you guys can wait. Yeah. While we're tuning, you go do that. You guys take your long rests in this hidden alcove between tombs. And as you sleep, we're all visited by a nightmare. It starts out in darkness, and you're walking through some space that you can't quite see, and you hear from the distance laughing, and you hear from your other side the chomping of teeth. You hear the grinding of stones and bones and flesh. Flashing in your mind are visions of that room filling with wine, gushing with blood. Everything is suffused with this green light and darkness. A green bearded devil's face emerges from the darkness ahead of you, begins to grow and open its mouth wide, wider, until the tops of the teeth and the bottom of the jaw are wide enough that you could walk right in. And you do go in, you fall, you fall through the mouth, tumbling, into blackness until there you are sitting on the edge of this ledge. It begins to crumble beneath you. You see this precarious drop below and you're scrambling, attempting to to hold on to anything. And you see thousands of writhing snakes beneath you, bathed in red blood. The ledge crumbles and you slip and you scramble and there something grabs your arms. You look up and it's Riven Osborn looking right into your eyes. He whispers assurances to you, but his voice is wrong. It's gravelly and nasal, resonating with malice and a dark sort of energy. I got, got you, you dear, dear, don't, don't you, you worry. And then you snap awake. So we all had this dream. You did. The dream was pretty chill for Crate. He like... <laughs> <laughs> he, who's this guy? He, <laughs> he, like, he liked the part with all the writhing snakes. That was cool. It's like, hey, it's my cousins. But who is that weird half elf? (laughs) Who was that weird half elf? You knew, right? Oh, that's right. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Really quickly, you guys are going to have to roll a save. What kind of save? It is going to be a constitution. Um, Oh, there's no save. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> Don't instead waste it. i just roll this and everybody's hit point maximums reduced by four Lame. our maximum yep 
I'm not at 69 anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh. No more sexy the word. I was going to say nice, but now I can't. Yeah, not nice. <laughs> not nice. <laughs> so you guys are in this alcove secret containment room between two different shrines. You know that there's that grand staircase that heads down to the bottom of that giant black dark shaft. And Douglas has let you know about the only other remaining hallway you haven't checked on this floor which has a green devil face pit. And I didn't like that from the dream very much. <laughs> yeah, does it feel reminiscent of that dream we just had? Well, you've seen that green bearded devil motif throughout the dungeon, mm-hmm. and it's never quite sat right with you. We can still go down a level too, right? Yes, there are another set of stairs going down. Before we go too far, Craig just wants to run over to Goatman. Hmm. Raise that sucker as a ghoul. As you guys open up this door and let a little bit of light in, you see that Lee has a beard. Whoa. What? Huh. It's a good look for you. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. You're looking closer at her now because now you're seeing this. It, there's, like a full beard? There's like this full beard coming off of your chin and there's bumps on the top of your forehead. And when Douglas looks closely, the pupils of your eyes are getting kind of wide, almost ovular. Uh-oh. You're shape-shifting. But why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> can I roll an arcana? Guys? Yeah, you, seem, you can roll an arcana, sure. I mean, it seems like a magic thing. <laughs> wait, wait. It's the staff. It's the staff. <laughs> you look at the staff that you spent last night attuning to, and it, the top of it is a goat, a goat head. Oh. <laughs> well, arcana uh, check passed. <laughs> well... Not that good of a staff. <laughs> well, I guess that man wasn't a goat man after all. He's just a staff goat man. Cool. No. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to turn into that guy. I don't want to be a goat. Can I do a knowledge on this to know if it'll wear off if I unequip it or whatever? Sure. I just want to know if this is a permanent Arcana thing. check. I think that's, yeah, I'll roll for that arcana check. 22. I got a crit on that. Nice. What'd you get, Douglas? 26. Oh. <laughs> 26. You know that this is probably a curse. Oh, no. <laughs> Some sort of cursed item. Oh, uh, you man. Think, sorry. You think that, that you are now bound to this item. It's going to take up one of your attunement slots. You can't get rid of it unless some sort of more powerful magic reverses the effect. So the good news is I don't have it prepared, but I can cast remove curse. So give it a couple days. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But honestly, you I think you it. look great. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't change a thing. <laughs> or if anything, change more. <laughs> I don't dress this way for your benefit. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wants to be attracted to herself, you know? Yeah. Also, I have more good news. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Since we're starting to lose hit points, we need to keep you guys around longer. So I'm going to cast aid on y'all. Hey, what's that do? Your, you maximum, got your maximum hit point increases by 10. Oh. oh. Hey. Is that, yeah. is that temporary hit points or is that? No, a, maximum increases. So make that just a plus six, not a plus okay. 10, because you still have the negative four. Yeah. Right. Ha ha. Slap in the old DM's face. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> or you would have had a full plus 10. Yeah. So yeah, we still lost something. Bummer, yeah. Yeah. And it cost a third level spell. So thank you. No problem. I guess. Yeah. Thanks for mind controlling me. <laughs> Two. This is making up Anytime. for the uh, how many? Thing. I've got it back now. How many allies can you do? <laughs> do Three. Like, so I can't do myself, unfortunately. Okay. But Sounds good. I don't need it. I'm awesome. Douglas, you still have the spell book, but we're going to say that because Whoops. you spent your time attuning to the Amulet of Health, you haven't been able to copy any spells out of it. Yeah. And so another rest, we'll take a look at it and see what you can pick from it. Okay. Let's go down a level, you guys. Downstairs. Let's run away from the devil by going down a level. All right. So hey. you head <laughs> back out to the grand staircase and down a level. And you find yourself on a little bit closer to the bottom of the shaft. The banister on this level, instead of being made of skulls or being carved devil heads, at the top of each banister is a carved eyeball. Mm-hmm. And it's probably just your imagination but it seems like they flick around to look at you as you walk past. Even with these sweet masks on? Even with the sweet masks on. Oh. <laughs> they you look at the walls of, of the stone walls of this level and you see that there's this purple mold 
growing from the floors and the walls and the ceiling. Smells like rotting corpses, and every once in a while you'll hear a tss as some mold spore like shoots a cloud of gaseous spore out into the air. I'm going to put a handkerchief over my mouth. Yep. That's a good Same. idea. Okay. Sure. And as you guys walk around the balcony on this level, you see too that these little mold growths every once in a while will blink open with eyeballs that look at you. Gross. Yeah. Oh, it's disgusting. You have on this level, right at the bottom of the stairs, a 10 foot wide hallway to the left that you see goes down. There's a couple of alcoves open on the sides, double doors on the very end, and one hallway that goes off to the right. If you guys are walking around, right as you come to that, attached to the wall. Let's read the plaque. All right. What do you see on that inscription, Lee? It says, walk through water with weapon in hand. Slate your shadow at the font. The vulture is the first step. Write the gods. The walls of history tell all. Wow, this one is messed up. Okay. Ahead of you to the north side of this part of the dungeon, you see another hallway go off north. And to the south, you see another hallway go off south before the stairs descend to the bottom of the shaft. Do we actually see a fountain anywhere? Or water. You do not see a font or fountain anywhere, but you can now see that on the main floor, about 25 feet down from you, there are four large gargoyle statues. Mm. These statues are four-armed, with big bat wings and horns. What did that guy say about four-armed gargoyles? It was a gargoyles? four-armed golem, yeah. <laughs> that like, separated their party, I think. Is what he said? Like the four-armed golem separated his party? He's got the thing. Our company was separated after the incident with the four-armed gargoyle. Mm. Nailed it. What's the thing in the center of the bottom floor? Another pit that goes deeper. Huh. Pits, man. They're the pits. Mm -hmm. They're everywhere. (laughs) On the main floor between these four gargoyles that are arranged sort of in a cross formation, there's a pit in between them that descends further down into the ground. Like it descends like it actually has stairs or just Nope, deep? it's just like a shaft. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry, another there's just shaft after shaft in this dungeon. Right. Should we check out this door first? Yeah, I'm it's not all laughing. Way? He's oh. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's Alex. <laughs> Let's try to find the tomb of the vulture. Okay. All right. Say that's first. So you are gonna head down the north hallway. We're gonna check it out at least. Okay. At the end of the north hallway, it's only about 20 feet down. There is a huge carving of a snarling jackal's head protruding from the wall at the end of this corridor. Through the mouth, you can see a chamber visible through the gaps of the jackal's fangs. It's not big enough to crawl through. The gaps are only about two inches wide. But if you look through, you can see the chamber on the other side. Through there, there are four torches illuminating stone sphinxes crouched in corners of this 15 foot high room. The torches cast flickering light across hieroglyphs carved into the tiled floor. At the center of the room, a gold inlaid funeral barge stands atop a three foot tall stone dais. Resting on the deck of the barge is a small golden sarcophagus decorated with horned rabbits. A dark shaft opens in the ceiling directly above the barge. Sounds like a jackalope is what it sounds like, but... Well, it's the Ijin. Ijin, okay. You're studying the features of this room for a few minutes, and then suddenly on the right side of the room, a slab of wall suddenly grinds upwards, and a dwarf wearing a turban and chainmail creeps into the tomb. He brandishes a shield in front of him as he treads cautiously across the floor. He takes a couple steps and then a loud click sounds out as he steps onto one of the floor tiles. Then a deafening buzzing rises as locusts pour out of the mouths of the Sphinx statues, quickly engulfing him. He tries to fight them off, but to no avail. When the cloud of insects vanishes, nothing of the dwarf remains except for his bones and his gear. Can I, from my distance, can I see what he stepped on? Like It looks like a floor panel. Just a floor panel, nothing about it. Yeah, uh, you can't quite see if there was the particular decoration or anything uh-huh. like that on it. it uh, you're at the wrong angle, I think. What was his gear like? <laughs> What's the gear situation? <laughs> he had like a scimitar, I think. Yeah, he had he had a, a shield. Did he have armor on? Chainmail. Chainmail? Yeah. Can Hork take the chainmail? Would I would, fit Hork? wouldn't go in there. You're not, sure, you're not so sure. No. He's on the other side of this like... Yeah. Honestly, window, you guys, I'm not really that into going into this room. Yeah, this is going to be great. Nope, this isn't the room we're looking for. Let's no. try another door. <laughs> yeah, we wanted right. the vulture room anyway. Yeah. 
Okay, do you go west or south or downstairs? West. Okay, you go back through the western hallway. As you start walking along, you see in these two alcoves on the side of this hallway, there stand two hulking figures facing each other. Armor is literally bolted to their flesh, and they wear bucket helmets and spiked gauntlets. There are iron collars around their necks connected to a spike chain that stretches across the corridor. Hmm. Seems a bit like a trap. Mm-hmm. Is it taut? It's loose right now. It looks like there's some room for them to maneuver. What height is it at? Waist height. Like it hangs from their necks. They're, they're medium sized. Hangs from their necks and hangs across the hallway. Further ahead of you to the right, there's a hallway going to the side. And directly ahead of you, there's double doors closed. How high are the ceilings in this room? The ceilings are eight feet tall. Okay. Good to know. Can you fly? No, but I can walk on walls. That's that's good enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I could go up and over and maybe see if I can find, you know, some kind of mechanism on the other side. Or uh, just take pot shots of the golems from here. Yeah, that's not a bad idea either. But that also might activate them and they'd run down the hallway and... Cut off our heads? Yeah. Yeah, clothesline us. That'd be cool. <laughs> Would that be cool? Yeah. It'd just be because like, you have a goat head now doesn't mean you want to die. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> That's where you're wrong. <laughs> I didn't know Lee was so vain. Oh, yeah. She's an elf. Yeah, after most elves all. are. I guess that's true. I mean, I just don't talk about it. Yes. Yeah. I know I always look good. <laughs> <laughs> Up till right. now. Yeah. So, so, what do you do? You've got this hallway heading away from you. These golems appear to be blocking the way, but they're not moving yet. Should I go up and over at least yeah. to get a better look? I think so. Sure. sure. So and I'll ready my bow in case. Yeah. So Crate kind of walks up the side of the wall and up onto the ceiling. Probably has to crouch just so he's not, because if it's only eight feet tall, yeah. he'd be tall enough to still be at risk. <laughs> so you're going to spider climb out along the ceiling? Yeah. I want to get over above and on the other side so I can investigate, see if there's some mechanism or something I can spot. As soon as you get to that line of the chain, oh. yeah. the golems spring to life and both launch towards you. Roll initiative. Lee fires because she had a ready to action. I'll allow it. 10 for Horik. Oh my god. Two for Douglas. I was looking the other direction (laughs) when this is happening. You heard a sound. You were distracted by the eyeballs. What's that? What does Lee have for initiative? Lee has nine. Oh, okay. And what does Crate have? You thought two was bad. I got one. (laughs) You have zero initiative? Yep. Oh, wow. Guess what? Golems are going first. Uh-oh. Uh, go ahead and make a ready to action, Lee. You can shoot one of them. Okay. Shoot the one on the left. 20 to hit. That hits. 11 damage. I will allow it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, Very generous. <laughs> how are the chains attached to them? Collars on their necks. Now, as your arrow pierces into one, you see this ripple of energy pass through the chain, Oof. and both golems sprout a bleeding wound where the arrow had struck the first one but neither are quite as bad as you thought they would so be. they're sharing the damage probably so they're gonna jump out first attacking crate so i'm up on the ceiling you are on the ceiling but it's only eight feet high crouching <laughs> they jump up and they punch you right. <laughs> these are pretty spry golems yeah <laughs> they're former boxers roll a jump check no <laughs> uh no oh <laughs> disadvantage <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a perk to being on the ceiling at some point oh hold on a second here yeah okay first attack with these spiked gauntlets on its hands 26 to hit sure i guess second attack 15 to hit nope okay so you will take 14 bludgeoning damage that's too much and 10 piercing damage from the, the spikes on the gauntlets. That's too much, too. Wow, yeah. It's qu- quite a bit, actually. They're not pushovers, I would say. The second golem is also going to attack. Guys, the plan didn't work. <laughs> yeah, it seems <laughs> like it was maybe a bad one in the end. No, now you're just like a punching bag hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> I'm a fucking pinata now. Candy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What you got on you? <laughs> Second golem goes to punch you. First attack is a crit. Second attack is a 21 to hit. Yep. Okay. Shit. <laughs> so wow. this is not going to be in, an insignificant amount of damage. 25 bludgeoning damage. 
and nine piercing from the first attack. (laughs) (laughs) Second one is six bludgeoning and five piercing. That'll do it. He drops. Oh my oh, god! Great. <laughs> from the ceiling. Great drops. The, I don't know from, if I do. I think you would drop from the ceiling onto the ground. You're not like willing yourself to. Yeah, but to the it's wall the anymore. shoes that do it, not me. Well, now he's not going to get that crown. We could probably just leave. So you're, just, <laughs> so you're dangling there like a pinata. I don't know if that's better. Or not. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I think that's worse. <laughs> uh, Depends what their intention is. <laughs> Horik, it's your turn. Oh yikes. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Hork is now a ranged fighter. Hork wishes he was a ranged fighter. He feels a lot more nervous about combat than he did in the past. And so yeah. he's going to, you know, sort of wander over towards where this little massacre Bum-ta-dum. has happened with, with Crate. But, you know, watching his surroundings while he's at it. And yeah, Hork attacks the one on his right. So the yeah. one further from me here. Okay. And because he's a creature of habit. It's going to be uh, Battle Axe, mm-hmm. War Mace, mm-hmm. and then probably Battle Axe again. Mm-hmm. Nat 20. Oh, oh, first one of the game. This is my first one in a few sessions, actually. 19 damage. 19 damage from Horik. And uh, did these guys have a weapon or are they just... They got that chain. They have these spiked gauntlets that they're right. punching with. Right, right. So Hork will attack again, obviously this time with the boar mace. Yeah. And he's going to make it, if he hits with it, he's going to make it a disarming attack. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to pull gauntlets off, but. I'm going to hit them so hard that they fall back a bit and the gauntlets get left behind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like in a cartoon. Like yeah. when you punch somebody out of their socks. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's how you know they're dead because their sure. socks are gone. That's an 18 to hit. That hits. And it's a disarming attack. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to add some damage. Sure. Six damage. And it has to do a strength saving throw. To it, get its you can't disarm it. Fucking gloves knocked off. No. Ah, All right. Well, it added some damage. You did some extra damage. Okay. Yeah. And do you have another attack still? Yep. Okay. Battle axe again. 23 to hit. Yeah. He's going to like really lunge into this attack. A lunging attack. So that's 21 damage total. Lee, you're next. Okay. You see, again, both of these golems, despite the fact that you hit one, they're sharing the damage as this energy ripples back and forth across the chain. Both of them sprouting bruises or cuts, but not, you know, not as bad as if you had just been doing damage to one of them. Is it better or worse for us to cut that chain? I was thinking, should we break the chain? But, uh... I mean, it's nice that they're both taking damage, but at the same time, it is just going to take a longer, right? Yeah, it'd be better to drop one and then take out the other. Okay. But uh, I don't really have the tools for breaking a chain. You don't have a bolt cutter arrow? <laughs> no. I have a goat staff. <laughs> You're so mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even really want it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to attune to it. <laughs> like, literally nobody made you do this. No, I was like, why not, though? It's here. That's why not. You turned into a goat. I do have my flame tongue longsword. Oh, yeah. Melt but that shit. It seems like a bad idea to get into melee with him if I don't have to. So I'm going to... There's a spot open there if you want to get in there. <laughs> Maybe Hamlet will. Well, I'm going to use my uh, bow and arrow again. I want to see if I can maybe pin one to the ground. Sure. So I'm going to aim for its feet or whatever. Doesn't matter which, apparently. So 13 to hit. No, nope. uh, it clinks off the armor. Okay. And second... 20? Yep. 13 damage with that. Okay. And then... Hamlet's going to get in there and attack. Hamlet spends his full attack scraping and clawing against these creatures, and you can see that his attacks, his claws, his bites, literally cannot pierce the skin of these creatures. Excuse me? I didn't even get to attack. I'm just telling you. That's dumb. Your attack rolls will not work. Don't do shit. All right. Doug. I'm going to cast Frostbite on the one that Hork is fighting, so it has to do a constitution saving throw. Okay. 15 is the target. It made it. Made it? Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> how much how much cold damage do I take? Three. Alrighty. Uh you see them get cold. Nipples are hard through the their spiked their their armor. Weird. 
<laughs> super weird. Tell me about such a vibrant imagery. Golem nipples. <laughs> Are they located where like a humanoid nipple would be? Well, the golem or? is composed of multiple yeah, creatures. I was so, curious like, about that. There might be a breast on one side and a, and a male <laughs> and a male pack on the other side, and they you know probably like heights are different. And right, is it only two nipples each, or not necessarily? Okay, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Crate roll a death save. <laughs> Thirteen. All right, you're good for a round. Can I fire my uh, zombie at these guys? Your zombie's firing. Well, mm. Oh yeah, I gave him guns. Yeah. <laughs> let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Do does your zombie's attacks count as magical? No, that's uh, not magic, but it does have a chance to uh, paralyze. Would that be a poison effect? It doesn't say. It's just a DC 10 con saving throw or be paralyzed for one minute. What's the name of the... Claws. <laughs> uh... Yeah, that sounds like... <laughs> sounds like poison. <laughs> the, and these are flesh go- These flesh yeah. golems are immune to poison. Then never mind. He still goes up there and starts scratching. Okay, so he's there. He's taking mm. up space. Blah, 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 blah. It's going to be the golem's turn. One's going to attack Horek, and the other will attack the Velociraptor. Oh, no. I don't know why he keeps putting this thing in harm's way. 18 to hit Horek. That hits. And second attack. That also hits. Take nine bludgeoning and eight piercing from the first hit. Yikes. And then 13 bludgeoning and three piercing from the second hit. Wow. And then for Hamlet, first attack is an 18. Yep. Second attack is also an 18. Seven bludgeoning, five piercing, and then nine bludgeoning and seven piercing as these flesh golems with their giant spike fist. Oh my God. You put them at exactly zero. (laughs) Falls unconscious. Oh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Horrick. Oh boy. Horik is going to just fight back right against the same one. Yep. He's a creature habit. He's going to do it the same way. It's mm-hmm. going to be battle axe, mace, battle axe. Mm-hmm. 23 to hit. And he's going to make it a sweeping attack. Okay. So he can expend a superiority die to deal damage to another creature within five feet of the original target. Ah, uh, nice. I'll roll damage for the one dead ahead of me here. Yep. Which is 13. Okay. And then Horik also deals seven damage to the other one. And he's going to do the exact same thing with the boar mace. He's going to do another sweeping attack. This is my second nat 20 of the session. Ooh, yeah. Thank goodness we need it. <laughs> yeah. 14 damage against the main target. And then he'll use the sweeping attack. And that's another 7 damage. And then he's going to use the battle axe one more time. 19 to hit. Yep. 7 damage. And he's also going to use his action surge so he can attack one more time. Ooh. And he's going to use the battle axe once more. Okay. And that's an 11 to hit. Ooh, that misses. Okay. Sorry, bud. The damage that you're doing this one, is it like shoop, 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 back and forth across the chain as you're slashing and, and pounding into these creatures, you see something snap within them. They're suddenly turned to this rage point. Oh, no. And they just start to thrash. It is Lee's turn. Quick question. Is yeah. Crate still on the roof? Or is Crate fallen? He probably would have fallen. I w- I'm going <laughs> to say he fell to the ground. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's honestly better if you're on the ground. Yeah. I'm gonna, He's oh, yeah. less of a target. If it's I, definitely better, but it's yeah. just funny. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to cast a Healing Spirit on top of him. Right on top of Crate? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to heal 1d6. The ephemeral spirit of town stands over Crate, snarling <laughs> at the golems. Does he heal right now? No, he'll heal on his turn. Okay. It's just a bonus action, though, so I'm going to take my two shots. Okay. First one's going to be a miss. Okay. Second one's going to be a miss. Alrighty. And I'm done. Okay. <laughs> cool. What about your Velociraptor? Is, is he doing anything? He's unconscious. Oh, right. Okay, roll a, roll a death saving throw. Doug, bless. Have we been able to tell what kind of creatures these guys are? Make an arcane check. Yeah, it will. I have no fucking clue. They're like made out of dead bodies, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll cast third level burning hands then. All righty. They seem like they're burnable. Yeah, they're flashy. Are you going to target just one of them? No, nope, both of them. I'm going to use my shape spell to go oh, over their heads. Okay, so you can avoid Horik. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, thank God for shape spell. So dex 15 saving throw. Oh. Both of them. Oh, oh. Fail. And fail. Give me that damage. Okay. 14. 
14 fire damage? Mm-hmm. Okay. To both of them, so... Yeah. Yes, they... well... Oh, nice play. Nice play. Thanks. <laughs> Good job. Not only that, but both of them, like, scream in fear and pain as the flame in- starts to incinerate their outer fleshy skin. <laughs> Whoa, okay. <laughs> I'm, I just nod. I'm like, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> You're on fire. Great. You are on a healing spirit. What do you do? I get four hit points back. And I ri- rise to the occasion. And you become a target for flesh golems. <laughs> nah, we're cool. Fire They're flesh not paying golems. attention. I'm like behind them now, I think, right? Is that where I was? You seem when- to be. They noticed the giant oh hulking God, mass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am great. First, I'm going to ask the zombie to just like run in between the two of them. Just run past them? Not, oh. not past them, just in between the two of them so that basically so more more chance that they'll take the hits instead of or that they'll attack the zombie instead of me. If you make it move through their space right now, they'll use their reactions against it. Oh, that's not a bad idea. You know he'll die, right? He's already dead. He'll die for good this time. Yeah. No more third chances. Revive one of these dudes. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. You get two for one because they're connected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless sure. he just drags around his that. dead body. <laughs> <laughs> So you make your zombie run forward. Zombie, take those hits for me. First one is a 22. Okay. Second one rolls a natural one. Your zombie will take 12 bludgeoning and 11 piercing. Yeah, he's dead. (laughs) (laughs) He's splattered. (laughs) And then I'm going to cast Vampiric Touch. Okay. (laughs) The face you're making, I'm like... (laughs) You never had a vampiric touch before? No one that sounded <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll make a touch deck. Okay. Ooh, 25. That hits. So they take 13 damage, and I regain 7 life. Okay. Then I will also cast Toll the Dead. They can um, both make wisdom saving throws, please. One fails. The other one succeeds. Oh, 15 damage on the one that failed. Okay. Perfect. And you see that necrotic energy sling back and forth across the chain. <laughs> like, like a credit card. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it is the golem's turn. And I'm looking at, I see a Horik. I see a zombie's dead. There's a crate standing right beside me. However, because they are singed by fire and still reeling from that terror of the burning they are attacking with disadvantage. They don't like fire. Miss. Yeah, fire bad. Miss. I don't like fire. Second golem attacking crate. Oh, oh fuck off. <laughs> you said they get disadvantage. The disadvantage. Yeah, yeah, you're lucky. 16 hit you. No. And second attack. Oh. <laughs> a natural one. Oh, you guys. You're so lucky with that. <laughs> They're just like swinging wildly, berserk, out of their minds, terrified by fire, and their fists swing over top of your heads, one after the other. Horik, it is your turn. Jesus. Well, we all know what Horik's about to do. Run? No, he's, he's going to fight. Oh, okay. Yeah, hit him. He's going to hit him. He's not going to run. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Do you have like a torch? You could just like, keep hitting <laughs> no, them with fire. No. And and Hork's a creature of habit, so he's doing the usual one, two, one, two. That's fine. 22 to hit? Yes. Okay. That is 11 damage. And then with the boar mace. Ooh, 12 to hit. Miss. And the battle axe. 10 to hit. Miss. All right. Lee, your turn. Spurred on by the fact that they seem to hate fire, she drops her longbow and takes out the flame tongue longsword. Nice. And yells, Flame on! Flameo! Flameo! Flame on! All right. And runs in. And. 19 to hit. That hits. Cool. 11 damage. And I'll swing again. Okay. 21 to hit. It hits. 6 damage. With a clumsy final slash. (laughs) (laughs) The flame sword passes through the arterial matter 
of the first golem's thigh and the fire runs up its body across the chain. The other one also erupts into flame and they just melt in front of you. And we'll see you in two weeks. If you enjoyed the show and want to support what we do, number one way is to leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Furthermore, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Share our new episodes on social media. Visit the House of Bob merch website on Etsy for House of Bob zines, dice trays, art prints, and more. And by joining the House of Bob Discord server to hear all the new episodes three days early. Artwork for this episode was by Sean Makes of Instagram.com slash Sean Makes. Audio production was provided by Astronomic Audio, the 100% Canadian-owned and operated podcast editing service that makes your big ideas sound even bigger. Music was produced by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. House of Annihilation is made possible by our Patreon supporters. And if you'd like to be part of making this podcast possible, visit Patreon.com slash House of Bobcast. Oh, sorry. Take that back. Rewind. Woo!